starting now. Hi, I'm Lisa Norell with Energize Growth, and I'm really pleased to be here at the Mid-Atlantic Marketing Summit with Mike Volpe, the Chief Marketing Officer for HubSpot out of the Boston area. And I really appreciate your being here with me. Thanks, I'm really happy to be here. So many questions I want to ask you. I mean, you've been part of the evolution, or should I say revolution, of inbound marketing. You've kind of created a whole new category. You have 6,500 customers now, and um, you get tens of thousands of leads a month. Um, you know, you've really been part of something exciting in a high growth environment. Um, and yet, you, you know, you've also helped foster this whole idea of pull marketing, mm -hmm. which I think in the B2B space where I, my community lives, um, pull marketing is very, very important. Um, help us understand how B2B customers or prospects can discern between effective pull marketing and content from the noise. What, how are you helping your customers deal with that? Yeah, I think it's, it's important to understand that there's been a lot of talk about inbound marketing and pull marketing. A lot of people are trying to do it. And um, I think the big mistakes that people make are they don't think about the content from their potential customer's point of view, and they're still thinking about it from their own marketing point of view. And they're trying to determine, well, what is the content that I want people to consume, as opposed to what's the content that my prospects actually are interested in consuming. And that's really, I think, the switch where people make big mistakes, and I think the, the real pitfall for a lot of folks in terms of you know, separating out from like, the buzz versus actually getting like, you know, effectiveness out of it. Uh, so I think it's a, a lot of it's really about looking at the content from that prospect's point of view and creating the things that they actually want to interact with and want to share with their friends, not the stuff that you want them to consume. So really, is there any ratio when, when a person, uh, when a marketing executive is laying out their strategy or their content strategy for the year of what they'd like to talk about and what their themes are. Do you recommend any ratios of how much of the content should be promoting the company versus promoting their customers or trends or something like that? I think it, it's one of those where you need to map your content to the stage of the funnel that people are in. So at the very top of the funnel, I think it almost it's close to 0% should be really about your products or your services or your company. The vast majority is just, you know, what are you doing to actually attract people in and what's going to be interesting to them. As people get closer and you need to have the content available for them to access, get closer to potentially purchasing something from you, of course they want to learn about your products and your services and maybe see case studies and learn more about your pricing and things like that. So I think though that most, as marketers, we've done a really good job over the years of creating that content toward the bottom of the funnel and we haven't done as good of a job at the top of the funnel. So that's really where I think most people need more work. But I think that that ratio you're asking about, it starts almost zero at the top, and then as you go down the funnel, it, it increases to almost 100%. Yeah, that's very interesting. And also, content strategy seems to be shifting right now in the marketplace. I mean, I remember four years ago when I started my blog, everyone said, oh, you must blog. It's, it's absolutely essential. And yet I think a new study from Dartmouth just came out that said, um, Companies they studied have the number of companies who are blogging has dropped from 2010 to 2011 from 50 percent down to 37 percent. So um, and these companies are moving their content development to Facebook. Um, so given that you are really have created careers and jobs in this in this economy around content relevant content development, what say you about this trend? It's interesting because um, I feel like the, the tools of how you publish this content and how the content sort of evolves over time and how it gets promoted are definitely going to change over time. I mean, when I started HubSpot, Twitter didn't exist, right? Um, and now it's, it's an important thing. So like the tools and the technologies are going to change. It's important to stay abreast of those tools and technologies. What I hope people don't look at that statistic and say is that long form content doesn't matter anymore. Because especially in B2B, I think it's really hard to be interesting and compelling in a 140 character status update, right? It's the link that you're linking to in that status update that I think gives people something to think about. B2B can be a complicated and involved sales process that requires a lot of in-depth information and content. So I still think blogging can be really powerful, but as long as you're using these other tools like Facebook or other formats of, of information where there's some long form detailed content there, I think that that's fine. You can use whatever format you want. But I think too many companies are getting sucked in the, into the 
I just, you know, I'll just post a bunch of 140 character status updates and not doing enough with long form content. Right. And Twitter has had its ups and downs in, st in terms of um, credibility and sure. in a lot of circles. Well, uh, we talked earlier about this, this question with, in Quandary, Chief Marketing Officers. Their roles seem to be changing rather rapidly. Where do you think, what do you think the role of the CMO will look like in three to five years? I think, well, I think now for many companies, and I think increasingly for lots of companies, the role of the CMO is becoming a lot more technology-centric uh, and a lot more centered around analytics. So I think the CMOs are learning that there's ways to better measure more of the marketing that they're doing, uh, and that they need to incorporate more and more technology into their marketing in terms of being able to measure it all, and also in terms of the, the actual activities that they're doing, right? And I think that CMOs used to do a lot with creative and brand. Not that those things aren't important anymore, but there being uh, there's other things that are equally important uh, in terms of analytics and in terms of you know using more of an inbound strategy, which means you have to involve a lot more technology, right? So you're thinking about blogging platforms and systems. You're thinking about lead management platforms and systems. You're thinking about social media platforms and systems. How all of those integrate together? Um, and there's there can be a lot of complexity there. Um, and a lot of um, tools that you need to worry about. And I think as a CMO, if you don't at least understand technology, you're gonna have an increasingly hard time doing your job effectively. So um, what can CMOs, and if you can speak on your own experience here, what can you do to stay energized and not inundated by the technological force or tsunami that is in front of us? Yeah, I would say, I mean, it's important just to stay informed. Um, and I think that one of the exciting things about being a CMO is your job evolves over time, even if the company doesn't, and even if your market doesn't, which those things you should change too. But even if those things, holding those steady, just the way that you have to do marketing um, is constantly changing. So staying informed, making sure you know, you're reading the right blogs and the sources of information and things like that, um, I find it super energizing. I mean, we were one of the first B2B companies to start to use Pinterest. And Pinterest is this whole new thing, right? And we started to use it as a B2B company. We had to do a lot of exploration, a lot of experimentation uh, to stay on top of new technologies like that that come out. Um, and I think that, to me, is energizing and exciting. Yes, yeah. well, good. Well, how can people learn more about HubSpot? Yeah, so uh, they can certainly go to HubSpot.com and learn more about our all-in-one marketing software platform. Uh, and we also have a free tool that will actually evaluate your marketing. Uh, it's called I've used marketing it many grader. times. Yeah. Marketing Grader yeah. is the bomb. You have to use it. <laughs> so that's it. And that's at marketing.grader.com if people want to check that out too. That's as, uh, as clear as possible. I like that. Well, um, I hope you come back to Washington, D.C. soon, Mike. It's been yeah. a delight to see you in person. And um, this is Lisa Norell signing off and wishing you an energized day.